You know, I thought rewatching all of the Blade movies back to back to back would have me get a newfound appreciation for the third film. But oh no, Blade Trinity, it still sucks. Hello, hello. What is up, everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and we have reached the end of the Blade Trilogy, the Blade Saga, with Blade Trinity. Why couldn't we just call it Blade 3? Like, seriously, are you trying to sound cool? Trinity? This is a 2004 film that is written and directed by the same writer of the first two movies, if you can believe that. David Goyer. Fuck. And the plot this time around is you see Wesley Snipes once again as Blade, who I'm sure was happy when he saw the script for this one. He's here and, and the vampires outsmart him into having the cops chase after him and having the world be aware of him and at least think he's a, a killer, a criminal. But the vampires are, are doing this to get to him because they have awoken Dracula. The original vampire named Drake. And so you have an all out finale war with Blade and these newfound night stalkers. And what the fuck? I'm trying to talk about the plot and I can't. I can't because it's so dumb. It's so half assed. This is clearly the worst of the Blade movies, but it's so bad. The very first time I saw this, I think I thought it was okay. Just okay. But years later when I watched it, it just, it was like, wow, wait, what happened here? And the more I watch it, like now, it just gets worse and worse and worse. It does not age well. You can tell Wesley Snipes does not want to be here. You can tell that either he was forced by contract to do this, or he thought, yeah, this script sucks, but maybe I can work it around, change it around do my own thing and you can tell he's trying here he's still trying to have that blade swagger I was born ready motherfucker but man there's nothing Wesley can do there isn't David Goyer I've never really liked him as a writer if I can be honest look he's co-written and I guess written some things that I do like, and so I guess I have to give him credit. But for some reason, when he does his own thing, when it's all him, I just think his writing is just bad and dumb, dumbed down. And that's foolproof here. You have Whistler, who's a character that David Goyer himself killed off in the first movie in a very dramatic way, brought him back from the dead in the second movie, just to kill him off again in the first 20 minutes of this film. Seriously? The vampires working up a strategy and coming up with a way to get more forces onto Blade and, and get him out into the light. Like, it makes sense in a way. So you're trying to go along with it until you see that, of course, all the cops are in on it with the vampires as well. Lazy, lazy, lazy. Took anything interesting that could have been there. Like, the villains have... This, this harvesting system where they have humans in this facility, this factory where they're just draining the blood from them and that's how they're going to sustain their bloodthirst and live while still killing everyone. And it's like, yeah, that's interesting, but you already had that in the first movie. Steven Dorff, that was his plan. So there's nothing even original in your own series. Speaking of that, Chris Christopherson, like I said, he's here for like a second. And then... They introduce Jessica Beale. Jessica Beale plays Abigail Whistler, the daughter of Whistler. But wait, didn't Whistler say in the first movie that a vampire killed his wife and two daughters? Yes, he did. But you see, he had another daughter after that that he never mentioned. Not only did he not mention to us, he never mentioned it to Blade. Even Blade is like, who are you? Seriously, you're supposed to have me believe that Whistler, who looked at Blade as like a son, Never told him that he had another child out there. And 
they have the gall, David Goyer, who's, who's just, I guess, lazy, too lazy to take Chris Christopherson and shoot a flashback scene of him and Jessica Biel where he'd had a moment with her where maybe he explains why he's keeping her a secret in a way and off in this pocket. No, they just reuse the same footage from the first movie of him talking about the vampire killing his kid, which has nothing to do with her. Because she wasn't one of the daughters and it's just there's no connection but they just splice in that footage because they have nothing else there's nothing else for her character i don't even buy jessica beal as a trained warrior or fighter especially because she's wearing headphones listening to music while she fights it's like you would die after the first night because you can't hear <laughs> ryan reynolds plays a character called Hannibal King, who I only remember that name because it's a badass name. It is, Hannibal King. But Ryan Reynolds, look, I like Ryan Reynolds in general. I do. I think he's funny. I think he's talented. And I, his humor just works with me. So him in this movie as this comedic guy, this smart ass guy with a big mouth, like it's funny. There are so many lines and so many moments where he's making me laugh, but then I stop and think, but does this fit in a Blade movie? It like there's one scene where he's talking to Jessica Biel and he says, "I'm," he hates me, right? Talking about Blade, and it's like, is that Hannibal King talking, or is that just an offshoot scene of Ryan Reynolds actually talking? What the fuck? It's these new characters called the Night Stalkers. How dumb is that? Because it was supposed to be a spin-off that they were going to offshoot later on. Where Blade just wanted us to be more about him. Because it should. It's his last third finality movie. Yeah, does that make sense? Anyone? But let's look at the villains. Parker Posey. Who, honestly, every time I see her in a movie, she annoys me. She does. I'm sure maybe the actress is nice in real life. But every time I see her in a film, I just want to smack her. And she's a woman, I would never do that, but, and she plays a villain here, so I guess it works, but I just, I've never really cared for her in films. Triple H! <laughs> Triple H is in this movie as a vampire as well, and that's just weird. But the main villain, this group of vampires dug up the coffin, the tomb of Dracula, played by Dominic Purcell, who's an actor that I've now gotten to know from other things like The Flash or Legends of Tomorrow, or he was in Prison Break. Like, I like the actor, I do, but back here, it just was not, it didn't work. The casting didn't work. What they were trying to go for did not work. You have this guy that I don't buy as Dracula, the original vampire. I know they try to update it and try to make it cool and hip, but no, it just comes off looking lame and dumb. You have the scene of him running away from Blade. Running away. Wow, real imposing, real threatening. <laughs> They call him Drake. Drake spelled with a K. Yes, like like the singer, rapper, Drake. They call him that for a nickname, even though they say that he used to be known as Dagon, which is a much more scarier, imposing name, but they went with Drake. So dumb. Such a horrible choice. This is what happens when you get a writer who probably wrote either halfway decent to maybe so-so scripts with the first two movies and then you had the directors look at it and say we gotta change this we gotta change that we gotta make this shit better but no this time you have the same guy directing and even his directing isn't even good there's certain shots of certain close-ups and you're just like what are you doing other people in the cast uh, Nat natasha leone who plays a blind woman i never really bought her character Patton oswalt who's here just to be here uh, John Michael Higgins, which, this is a joke. This whole movie is a joke. You're not taking any of this plot seriously, any of this cast seriously. James Remar plays a detective who, it would have been a lot more interesting if you had these, these cops, these detectives, going after Blade because of what the vampires did, exposing him, and, and, and having it be about these people who don't believe in vampires and just think that Blade's a serial killer. It does like five minutes of that in the film, and it's the best part of the plot in my opinion. Oh, man. And you have this actor, Christopher Heyerdahl, who, great actor, he's here for two minutes. Even though there was a bunch of action all over the place, even though it tries to move along, a waste, atrocious, 
David Goyer, never direct a movie ever again. Write all you want, just have somebody else deal with it. This is bad. I don't blame Wesley Snipes for being a dick on set. So guys, let me know in the comments below what you think of Blade Trinity. Do you like it more than I do? Am I being way too harsh on this? Or do you agree that this movie just absolutely sucks? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later. Got a gold in mind, can't stop till I reach that the gold is mine. No feet up, seat back, music I breathe that sleep that eat that ease back is pretty clues leading the pack. Cause it is like snacks a little to hold you over light work to me, but opponents under a bull.